us to sing it all day. It's prayer meeting. It's not by our power, it's not by our mind. It's just by His grace. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Today, the third day is going to raise us up, raise our glories up. Hallelujah. Something that makes me go. 
Unto your name, we say, Be that glorified the name of Jesus. Amen. Holy Spirit divine, today is the third day, and your word says, In the third day, you will raise us up. I pray, everyone under the sound of God through me today, let the power of resurrection to bring out your glory from where it has been buried. Let it rest upon you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Say, Power of resurrection. Power of resurrection. Bring out my glory. Bring it out. Bring it out. Bring it out. In the name of Jesus.
that wizard that to bring it out and they call it for say this is original certificate. This We pray. Amen. The glory of God that we carry is the nature of God that is residing in all the nature of God Himself. We are immature in us. So the God is our 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 gift out. That is nature. God just get it. God put it there. I want us to pray. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let your nature. Let nature. In my life. In my life. Manifest in the name of manifest Jesus. Manifest in the name the of Jesus. The nature of God must manifest in your life. Of God. God, God let life. your nature in my manifest. manifest. And to see your God, they will look at you and say, This one is not man, no. this one is a special species. You are not for somebody today, the grace to rule and reign. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Amen. We are created to expose his glory, but in a way that no other creature could expose it, no other creature. That God has created can explain or express God's glory. We are unique and we can only fulfill our purpose as a carrier and exposer of God's glory only as long as we live in the right environment and maintain right relationship with God. Before we go into the world, you are going to pray, Lord, where is the environment? Lord, where is the environment? That you have chosen for me to to display my ordained glory. That you have chosen for me to display my ordained glory. Let me have the understanding of that environment now. Let me have the understanding of that Show environment. Show the environment to me. Show me the environment. The environment Lord. you have created. The environment you have created for me to manifest my glory. For me to manifest my glory. Lord, reveal them to me. Lord, reveal them in the to name me. of Jesus. In the name of as Jesus. As I go into your world, as I go, Lord, reveal it to me. Reveal it to reveal me. Them to me. Reveal them. To in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, blessed Redeemer. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 In Jesus' name. Say to Hallelujah. Amen. Let somebody clap for Jesus. You may be seated. Don't forget, this is a prophetic and apostolic gathering where we hear the word and pray. Tonight, I will be speaking, today is the third day, I will be speaking on the topic, the environment of glory. The environment of glory. Let's turn our Bible to the book of Genesis. Genesis, that's the first book of the Bible, chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2. We are going to read verse 7 to 9. And we are going to read verse 15 to 17. Are you there? Genesis 2, 7 to 9. And on the seventh day, God ended his work which he has made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he has made. Oh, verse 7, verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nursery the breath of life. And man became a living soul. And the Lord God planted a garden, his word, in Eden. And there he, he put the man whom he formed. <laughs> then verse 9. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and the good for food, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Let's go to verse 15 and through 17. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and keep it. 
And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but in the tree of knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. You will not die. In the name of Jesus. The presence of God is the perfect environment for our fruitfulness. Every living thing needs a proper environment in which to display their God-given glory. So if you are going to display your God-given glory, we will see where we just read. There is an environment that God has created for us. When we look at the box, then need the sky and the open year to fully express their glory. If you take a board now and, and lock it up in a cage, it cannot show for this glory. Isn't it? Why? Because his cage is limited. Power limiting you. Let the power be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Amen. So, if a board is put in a cage, that board is restricted by its environment. I don't know the environment that is restricting you. That environment restricting you, restricting your glory. May the Lord pull you out of that environment. Amen. So as man, for you to function properly and fully display your glory, you need an environment where you'll be surrounded by the presence of God. A place where you could be constantly and continually in union with God. Before God created man, as we are, God prepared an environment perfectly suited for him before he created us. And he called the place what? Eden. The place that God prepared for man before we were created was called Eden. And Eden means pleasant. A pleasant place. Eden means player. So that is the place that God created the environment. A pleasurable place. Eden means delight. That is the meaning of Eden. So the garden of Eden, therefore, could also be called the garden of pleasure. The garden of delight. The garden that is pleasant. The garden of Eden. That is where God created us. He planted the garden and put us there. Other scriptures in the Old Testament refers to Eden as the garden of God. The garden of God. The garden of the Lord. That is the presence. So when we look into the meaning, we could say or conclude that there was more to garden of Eden than just simply a geographical location. Eden represents a state of pure, complete and unbroken relationship with God and man. I want us to understand this because every one of us wants to manifest glory. But many people, they have broken the relationship between them and God. They have been separated from God, the one that gives them glory. So, I don't know how you can manifest glory when you have been detached from the giver of glory. So, there should be a fellowship, unbroken fellowship between you and God for you to really display the glory as given to you. So, when we look at Eden, Eden is, was a special spot on earth. That God shoes where the unseen world touched the seen world, where the spiritual meets the physical. So it was an open door between God and man, between heaven and earth. A place where the presence of God covers a cloud. It then was more than environment than the location. It's, it was more an environment than a location. That is an environment that you must be. So when we look at Eden, Eden was the perfect environment for Adam and Eve to bring forth all he was, all that he was, and thereby display his glory and function fully, just as he was created. That is where God put it. Adam would bring glory to God as long as he remained. In the garden. And Adam experienced perfect joy, complete fulfillment in the presence of a creator. When we look at Adam, 
The only time that he enjoyed joy, perfect peace, was when he was in the garden, in the presence of God. Can someone pray? Say, Oh Lord, my Father, oh Lord, my take, father. Me to take me to Hayden and let me remain in Hayden that you have prepared for me in the name of Jesus. Say, Oh Lord, take me to Hayden. Take me to Hayden where you have prepared for me. Hey, we are we experience perfect joy, perfect peace, fulfillment. There is an Eden that is prepared for you. Pray, Lord, take me to that Eden. The Eden you have prepared for my family, for my father, for my mother, for my brother, for my sisters, for my children. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If there is any prayer that you need to pray every day, Lord, take me to the Eden that you have prepared for me. Until you get to the Eden that God has prepared for you, there will not be fulfillment. There should not be display. There will not be manifestation of glory. God will take you to that Eden. Amen. Say good amen. Amen. So Adam found not only the presence of God in the Garden of Eden, he also found purpose. He found purpose there. Woman being cannot experience complete fulfillment in life unless they find purpose in life. That is why you can experience fulfillment. Fulfillment come with purpose. So Adam was to take care of the garden. By God's design, he was steward of the garden and also the master of created order. That was his glory. The glory of Adam was to be the steward of the garden and to be the master of created order. The glory of man was to expose and manifest God's nature and the character through the exercise of dominion on earth by our inherent gifts, by our talent and our ability. God has given us some inherent gifts, some inherent talent, some ability and that is his nature in us so that we can display who God is. I pray that inherent gift talent and ability that God has given to you, may you begin to manifest in the name of Amen. Jesus. So we can see from Eden that you cannot do anything outside the presence of God. You can't do anything. It is in his presence that you can discover who you are. It is in his presence that you can discover your purpose and find fulfillment. Are you listening to me? Yes, sir. Most of the youths today, they are looking for other places, looking for an environment. They thought that it is by joining courtism or belonging to some worldly gangs that can make them to what? To have fulfillment. To find purpose. No. It is when you are in his presence. It is when you are in fellowship with him. His presence is the perfect environment that you can strive. That is where you can strive. The Bible says in John chapter 15 verse 4 to 5 John chapter 15 4 to 5 I want all the youths that want to become somebody in life to please listen to this they, are, they will be calling you, they will be inviting you come and belong to this, come and belong to that so that you can strive, you need to tell them no, it is in God that I have my being, it is God that I will move, it is in God's presence that I will manifest glory John chapter 15 verse 4 and 5 says abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine no more can ye except ye abide in me he said I am the vine ye are the branches he that abided in me and I in him the same bringeth forth fruit much fruits for without me ye can do nothing this is one of the scriptures that helped me as I was growing in life. I came about these scriptures and I come to my understanding that, oh, without him, I can do nothing. Without him, I can, I can become nothing. Because he is the branch. Abide in me. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine. No more can ye except ye abide in him. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abided in me and I in him, same bring forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Listen to me, folks. Without him, you can do nothing. 
Why can't you abide in him? Why can't you be in him? Don't abide in anybody. Don't abide in any group, in any company that is different from God himself. As a fish, as I've told us, cannot display his glory, which is swimming, except only in water. A fish doesn't struggle, Abi, when it's in water. He swims without struggle. But if you take a fish out of his watery, watery environment, eh? And, it's, and you put him on the, on the ground, he starts having problems. Any time that you are taken away from God's presence, then your problem starts. You tell some people, come and pray. You tell some people, give your life to Jesus. It is in Jesus that say, Jesus, ah, I can't wait for Jesus. So people see praying or coming to God's presence in the church, hearing God's word as a waste of time. They will tell you, ah, we must eat, we must work, we must work. Yes. But it is in his presence that you have fulfillment. So, if you take a boat too, or a fish, as I've said an example, they can't prosper expect, except when they're in the proper environment that God has created for them. A fish will not, it will not take him 10 minutes before he died if you put him on the bare floor because he will have problems. I pray for you. If you are not in that environment that God wants you to be, may you be relocated there in the name of Jesus. Amen. May you flourish in the proper environment. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So man also was created to function in a prescribed environment, the presence of God. And our glory is to be like God and to rule in fellowship and harmony with God. So the only way we can really learn how to be like God and rule like God is to live in the environment that is permeated with the presence of God. If you go to any, any environment that is not permeated with the presence of God, you will know and say, this is not my environment. How can you as a child of God be playing around brutal? What is your business there? Where people are smoking where people are talking what is not of God an environment that is not permeated with God's presence if you find yourself there you have to run the Bible says you should not sit with scoffers don't sit with people that has nothing to do with godly things but today we see many of our, our people that says they belong to God in an environment that is questionable what are you doing in an environment where the presence of God is not felt and instead of them to come to the presence of God, they will begin to run. Our glory is, cannot manifest outside God. And how can you live in God's environment? In order to be like God, number one, we must know God. You must know God. If you want to be like God, rule like God, you must know God. And to know God, we must spend time in His presence. You need to spend time. That is the problem of many of us. To really spend time in his presence is difficult. Let us cultivate the habit to be in his presence. I read, I read uh, uh, an, a magazine this month. Yes, early this month. And that, part, that person in that magazine says, Ah, I'm not praying at all. I'm not praying at all. I mentioned people that have been praying, people that will be in God's presence for three hours, not stopping. Somebody that will pray in the morning and will be praying, like Apostle Yobabalola that prayed in the night when they say they want to pray. He, he went visiting somebody and they said, Daddy, pray for us. They want to go and, and sleep. And he started praying. He started praying. He started praying from 9 p.m. And Baba did not stop. In the midnight, and Baba is be praying, praying. And when they discover this, Baba is still praying. One after the other, they went to sleep. They left in there. They to sleep. And when they woke in the morning, they still met the Baba praying. And they joined him. Amen. 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 They are just saying, Amen. So when they discover that, they are getting to their place of work. They left Baba there. They went to their place of work. They returned. Still met Baba on his knee. Praying. That is how to spend. You, you see, of time. 
No wonder he carries God's presence. He carries God's power. Many of us can't have time to read our Bible for one hour. We don't have time to even pray for 30 minutes. When you pray for 30 minutes, you are tired. You begin to look at your watch. If we spend more than two hours in service today, people will be grumbling. We are wasting our time. We have place to go. You have place to go. But there is something that you derive in his presence. So you must know how to spend time in his presence. Man problems and struggle began the day he was driven out of God's presence. Don't you know? When, when Adam and Eve was driven out of his presence, then problem began for them. For you to manifest God's glory, you, you have to live and fulfill to, to manifest God's glory and live to fulfill life and destiny. You must pay the price of being in his presence continually. Don't allow anything to take you away from his presence. For in his presence, there is fullness of fulfillment and joy forevermore. I want us to pray this time. Somebody that really desires God's presence. You know that you are not enjoying God's presence. You are going to pray. Say, oh Lord, my Father. Oh Lord, my Father. If I have been driven away from your presence, by your mercy, oh Lord, bring me back. Bring me back. Bring me back. If I have been driven away from your presence, bring me back from by your mercy. In the name of Jesus, I want to enjoy your presence. I want to enjoy your presence. In the name of Jesus, they mark it a and make it higher. By your mercy, bring me back to your presence. In Jesus, we pray. Yeah, what? Psalm 16 verse 11 says David understand God's presence he said thou will show me the path of life in the presence is the fullness of joy and at the right hand there are players forevermore you are going to say oh lord my father, oh, lord, father. power within and without power within and without that one be away from your presence. Let it be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Power within and without. I want to take away from your presence. Let the power be destroyed. Let it be destroyed. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every external power. Internal power. I want to take away from your presence. Destroy. Be destroyed. Be destroyed. In Jesus' name. Amen. You see, with this understanding, what everyone wants to cry for, Lord, let me abide in your presence. Let me abide in your presence. Don't, you, you can't be tired of his presence. Because in his presence there is fullness of joy. One of the keys to manifest your glory in life is to make sure that you put yourself in an environment where your glory can shine. And with the environment as I'm telling you, it's God's presence. Say, oh Lord, oh Lord, put me in that environment, put me in that environment. where my glory will the environment of your presence where my glory will shine put my children the environment of your presence where your glory will shine in the name of Jesus Lord bring put me there put me there as you put Adam there put me in the name of Jesus in Jesus mighty name we pray before you plant a seed you have to shed the soil is it it then you need to guide the seed of glory inside you. You have to guide the soil. Which soil are you planted? Have your seed. If you don't guide the seed of glory inside you, it can be wasted in an unwanted environment. That's an unwanted environment. Environment that you're supposed not to be. At times, you will see your parents, I'm talking to the youth now, they will tell you, I don't want you in that place. Don't go to that house. I remember when I was growing up, my, my, my mother would say, I don't want to see you in that house. I would say, what's wrong with the house? What's wrong with the house? Don't you want me to play? He has seen something that that environment can pollute me. And it was true. It was true. I remember an environment where they said I should not go. And I would see that I was going there. The guy that I call my friend, we go around and kill people's chicken. And we kill it. He will be cooking it. So I joined him. One day, we went to the bush. We started killing people's chicken and we are killing it. 
One day he come to my senses and say, Ah, what we are doing is, is bad. Ah, I say, Don't worry. One day the people, the owner of the chicken started raining courses. Started raining courses. Ah. I say, I'm no more eating your, your chicken again, no. So there is an environment that can waste your destiny. Say, Oh Lord, my father. Oh Lord, my father. That environment. That environment. That can waste the destiny of my children. Can waste the destiny of my children. Oh, take them away from there. Oh, take them away from environment there. Environment that will waste my destiny. Waste my destiny. I, will I will not go there. Or wanted environment. I will not go there. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Do you know that a lot of people that ask glory are unable to manifest it because the people they associate with, people that they hang out with, they hang around with. If you hang around people who are lazy, if you hang around people that are not disciplined, people who don't have great dreams, people who are negative, people that are critical, they will rob you your glory. They will rob you your glory. Thank God that it came to it. I came to my senses quickly. To my senses quickly. Ha! You are going to pray. Say, Oh Lord. Oh Lord. By your power. By your power. Separate me. Separate me from the people, from the people that can rob me of my glory. Of my glory. Separate my oh, children my from glory. people that will rob them of their glory. Say, Oh Lord, Father. Oh, Father. Separate me from people that will rob me of my glory. Separate me. I want you to pray very well. Pray that prayer for your children. There must be a separation. People that can rob me of my ordained glory. Separate me from them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Sit down. The environment you put yourself have a lot to do with your glory. I want you to note that too. The envir- because many of us, we put ourselves in an environment that can destroy us. You are coming out for that environment. Amen. I say you are coming out. Amen. So Amen. if your friends is telling you, I'm telling you all this youth now, they are telling you, please, you better listen. You better listen. Don't put yourself in negative environment. You cannot hang out with negative people and expect to live positive life. If all your friends are people that cannot help your glory, they will pull you down. Are you listening to me? Yes, sir. They will pull you down. If people you hang out with, there are people that can't help your glory, they will pull you down. Even as a pastor, I know my friend. People that can't help my glory, I separate myself from them. They will pull you down. I pray for you that God will help you. Amen. So you need to put yourself in a healthy, positive, and faith-filled environment. Are you listening to me? A positive, a healthy, and faith-filled environment where you know that, yes, this place is healthy. This place cannot affect me. I can't contact virus here. This is an environment that I love. People that are godly, faith-filled people. This is very important. And crystal, because no matter how good a seed might be, if you don't put it in a good soil, what will happen to the what will happen to it? It won't prosper. It will die. So get around you people who will inspire you and rise higher. Are you listening to me? Yes, sir. People that can inspire you, people that will make you to rise higher. That is the kind of people I love. I don't love people that will be going to bring me down. People that will inspire me. I pray God will give us such people. Amen. You have to be, be you have to be careful whom you associate yourself with, especially when you feel emotionally vulnerable, because negative people can steal the dream right out from your heart. Every negative people that you have been hanging around with that want to steal the dream of your life, may the Lord deliver you from them. Amen. I want to tell us, everybody, let us be aware of negative influences. Negative influences. They are around us. And they are pursuing our dream. When you know that you have a dream, when you know that you have a glory, you have a goal, they will begin to influence you. Negative influences. Negative influences. I was in a market area, and I saw some guys, youths, smoking in their hands. If you see their eyes, their hand, you know that these people... They are, they, are, they are close to, to insanity. They are close to madman, mad people. 
and they were in a, and they gathered themselves and look at them. These are children of some people. And there was a lady there among them. He now called another lady. And they said, Leave me alone. I don't they said, come now. He said, Leave me alone. What's wrong? And they started fight. And he said, You want me to become the way you are? That was he said, I can't come there. What do you want you to go and do? You want me to be like you? I won't be like you. So that one have to reject negative influences. There are some people that will influence you and they will mar your glory. I want to pray for somebody. Any negative influences around you, around your children, today, let the Lord destroy them. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So you need to surround yourself with people who will encourage you. People who will build you up. That is the kind of people you need to surround yourself with. Certainly, you need people who will be honest enough to tell you when you are wrong, when you are making wrong choices, when you are making bad decisions, you need people that will call you to order. Don't surround yourself with a bunch of yes men, the bunch of people that can't correct you. Don't surround yourself with people that will just tolerate you, or a bunch of negative people, people that are critical. Don't surround yourself with people that will tell you you can't do it. There are some people when you want to do something, ah, you can't do it, don't try it, oh. Nobody has ever done it that, that succeed in life. Don't surrender, your, don't surrender yourself with such people. If somebody has done it and they don't succeed, does that mean you will try it and will succeed? I've seen people that want to enter into some trades, some God-given businesses. And then somebody says, ah, that business is bad. Not that it's bad. And he said, people that did it are not succeed. You too, you are different. If God is asking you to do something and somebody is asking you can't do it, separate yourself from them. Sometimes the people who will discourage you the most are the people, people that are close to you. Isn't it? Yes, sir. Beware, beware of people that are close to you. They can discourage you. Don't rely on them because they are close. They can even be your relatives. When David was about to show forth his glory publicly, you know he has been shining in the bush. But the time came, an opportunity came for him to show forth. Who are, who are the people that discourage him? His brothers, David came. His brothers discouraged him. But David ran away from them, Abby, from that environment. And he went and met some people. And those people were encouraging him. And they, at the result, he killed Goliath. Isn't it? Yes, and from that moment, he started what? Manifesting glory. So don't say it's your brother, it's your sister that is discouraging you. Run away from them. If you say, I have this dream, I have this thing in me. And they say, ah, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. Run away from them. So, if they don't believe in you, believe in yourself. You too may have a family member like David or relatives who lack vision, who lack dreams and they don't want you to move forward. Separate yourself from them. Please, don't fight them. Just don't fight them. What you just need to do is what? Give them distance. Life is too short for you to be pulled down by negative jealous and critical people who have no vision. People that are going nowhere. That's what people, they have no vision. No. They have just come to this world just to eat, drink, and die. That is their vision. You are going to pray. Say, Father, Father deliver, me deliver me from vision killers. From vision killers. Deliver, me deliver me from people, from people that can kill my dream. Kill Open my your dream. mouth and pray the name of Jesus. Lord, deliver, Lord, deliver, me, deliver me from deliver vision me. killers. Deliver, deliver me from people, people that can kill my dream. In the name of no me matter how close, how related. In the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, deliver me from them. Deliver me, deliver me. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It doesn't matter how great your gift or how much potential is locked inside your seed of greatness. If you don't put that seed in the environment that is conducive for growth, it will not take root. Do you believe that? If the seed you are planting, you don't put in a place that is going to get root, and continue for growth, that seed can die. So it will be nearly impossible for your dream to flourish in an unwanted environment. You need to be in the company of dreamers. What did I say? Company of dreamers. Not daydreamers. So people with big goals. People who want to achieve great things in life. 
Associate yourself with people that will help you to become all that God has created you to be. You are going to pray now. Say, Oh Lord, my Father. Oh Lord, my Father. Lead me, lead me to the company, to the company that will enhance my glory. That will enhance my glory. Ah, lead me, oh Lord. Oh Lord, lead me to the company, to the company that will enhance my glory. My in the glory. name of Jesus. Name of people Jesus. that will help me, oh Lord, lead me to, to that become, help me. become all that I, all, all that you have created me to be. People that will help me to maximize my glory. Lord, lead me there. Lord, Lord, lead lead me, there. me to them. Lead, me to lead my them. children to this company. In the name of Jesus. Aha. Pray that prayer very well. In the name of Jesus. Lead me to that right company. Lead me there. Lead me there. Lead me there. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. We are going to sing a song now. That song is a beautiful song. I've told us, if you don't take anything out of this place today, they, I've told you that the mountain of his presence is where glory is revealed. And when we are out of his presence, struggles, pain, and frustration will be the order of the day. So let us find our way back to the mountain of his presence that we may enjoy the purpose of our creation. Are you listening to me? God's original purpose was that Eden to be duplicated throughout the world so that his glory will fill the heads. And this is too was to be you are to be part of the people that will spread God's glory around the world. God told Adam and Eve be fruitful, increase in number, fill the earth and do what? Subdue it. Genesis 1.28. Being fruitful means to bring out what is inside of you to expose your eating glory to be fruitful means be productive as well as to reproduce oneself god wanted them not only to produce themselves by having babies but also to reproduce their environment he said in effect adam begin here in this eden i want you and Eve to have children lot of children i want you to raise a righteous seed that we grow up loving my presence the way you do. I want you through them to duplicate this paradise, this Eden of my presence over and over and over until the whole heart is filled with my glory. His presence was the only environment that they needed. Under his covering, they were completely free to be fruitful, to multiply and become everything he intended them to be. Only in God's presence could we fully expose the glory and only in his presence could his glory shine through us. I want us to sing this song. I just want to be where you are. Dwelling daily in your presence. Take me to the place where you are. I just want to be with you. I just want to be where you are. In your dwelling place forever. In your dwelling place forever. Take me to the place where you are. Take, Take me, me to the place, place where you are. I just want to be with you. I, I just want to be with you. I just want to be where you are. I just want to be where you are. Dwell in your presence. Dwelling in your presence, feasting at your table, feasting at your table, surrounded by your glory, surrounded by your glory, in your presence, in your presence. That is where I always want to be. That is where I always want to be. I just want to be with you. I just want to be. I just want to be. I just want to be with you. 
Say, oh Lord, my Father, oh Lord, my Father, I want to be in your presence. I want to, be in your presence. I want to dwell in your presence. Lord, take me to your presence. Lord, take me to your presence. Take me to where you are. Take me to, where you are. Take me to your presence. Take me to your presence. Don't let me disappear from your Don't presence. Let me from in your the presence. name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Pray that prayer, Lord, take me to your presence. I want to be in your presence. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. When I say God's presence, I'm not saying when you are in the church like this that you are in his presence. You can even be in church and not in his presence. Many people who have lost his presence from the 24 hours that God has given to you in a day, how many, how many hours do you dedicate to God? You know, when you find yourself in God's presence, praying, studying the word of God, the Lord will give you an idea in his presence. Where did Daniel got the solution to partial government to, for Nebuchadnezzar? Where did he get his, the solution? From God's presence. What make him to, him to make him part and serve generation of king was because he was always in his presence. And when they discovered that, oh, this is the secret of Daniel, they made a decree. We want to stop Daniel from praying, Abby. They want to take him away from God's presence. They say, let's make a decree. Nobody should go to God's presence. But when they made that decree, <laughs> it opened the door. Say, nothing will take me from God's presence. You are going to pray. Please, I want everybody to pray. Many may not like this prayer, but this is the, this is the foundation for manifestation of glory. Because out of him, you can do nothing. Out of him, you can't become anything. You can be running at a scatter without Jesus. You are going to find your water. You are going to meet your water low. It's destruction. There is a way that cement right in the sight of man. But the end of it is what? Destruction. If that way is not the narrow path. Say, oh Lord, my Father. Oh Lord, my Father. I love your presence. I love your presence. I want to be your presence. I want to be your presence. Lord, take me to your presence. Lord, take me to your presence. Let me dwell in your presence. Let me dwell your presence. Let, teach me how to be your presence. Teach me how to be your presence. Help me to be your presence. Help me to be your presence. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Help me to be your presence. Help me to be your presence. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I want to be your presence. I want to be your presence. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Ah, help me, Holy Spirit. I want to be in your presence. Ah, I want to be there dwelling. I want to be your presence in the name of in Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus, I want we to pray. be your presence. Amen. Do you know the Lord told me that there is somebody right now? You are hearing me. You have gone into the into the company of some people that have damaged your destiny. Amen. You have gone to an environment that you're supposed not to be. And they have damaged your destiny. You are going to pray. Where my glory has been damaged. Where my, my glory, glory has been damaged. The environment that damaged my glory. The environment that damaged my glory. Lord, by your mercy. Lord, by your mercy. Help me. Help me. To recover my glory back. To recover my glory back. Help me. Help me. To heal my glory. To heal my glory. In the mighty name of Jesus. Pray that prayer. Any environment that have have been. Any environment that my children have gone to that have damaged their glory today, Lord, help them to be delivered from that environment. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. That was a day I was praying outside the church in the middle of the night. It was around to 3, 3 a.m. in the night. I was praying and I saw a guy that was walking. He put a bag and his back. He was going and I put my torchlight. I said, Stop. When that guy stopped, so where are you going at this time? He said he's going to that it was weak. He needs you are weak. Weak for what? Where is he going? He's going to a brutal. We are there saying in their hands. We are there in that Ashewo place. That brutal. He said that's where he's going. I said, at this time. Ah! And, and I look at it. I said, Where are you from? I look at his life. They look at how you have done. I say, You came out of your room three to three because you are weak. You want to take something. I said, you want to go and meet Asher? We said, no, I'm not, I don't, but I just want to go and take something to shack up. You can't sleep. His, his destiny has been damaged. I want to pray. Anyone that their destiny has been damaged by going to wrong environment, today, let the Lord repair your destiny. Amen! In the name of Jesus. Amen! Ah! Lord Deba was where they put Mephibosheth. A whole prince. 
He was eating with, with slaves, slaves of his father. But there was a decree that came out. They brought him out of Lodeba. They, they, Lodeba means a deserted place. Lodeba means a forgotten place. Somebody today, as you roar this amen, let your glory come out of Lodeba. Amen. The glory of your children come out of Lodeba. Amen. That environment that is killing you, come out. Amen. That environment that don't want you to grow and manifest glory, come out. Amen. I make a decree today. The decree has gone out. Led by the decree of God, the right place, the right environment, which is God's presence. May the Lord take you there in the name of Jesus. Amen. The last prayer before our before you go today, say, Oh Lord, my Father, oh Lord, my father move, me move me by your power, by your power to, the right place, to the right place, to the right company, to the right company. in the name of Jesus. In the name of move, Jesus. Me move me there where I ought to be yeah. in the name of Jesus. Take me there. In the name in Jesus. Mighty name we pray. Amen. As we have prayed, so shall it be. Amen. God will take us to the right environment. Amen. We will not miss his presence. Amen. We will love his presence. Amen. We will dwell in his presence. Amen. And if there is any power that wants to take us away from his presence, that power will be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, blessed Redeemer. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 In Jesus' name. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you blessed tonight? Yeah. Are you blessed? Say, I am blessed. I am blessed. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I want us to give God our offering. Get your water ready. Get your anointing oil. Get your mantle ready. Your prayer request, get it ready. I'll be praying for those that send their... A lot of people all over the world, they are sending their requests, prayer requests. People watching us all over the world, they are sending their requests. I'm praying for them. Personally, one after the other. And I know God will give them testimony Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. If you are giving your offering online, you are going to see the account details. Please do. The Lord will bless you. This is a meeting of 30 days. 30 days. Today is just day three. And I want us to give something tangible to God. Many, many people every year, we even sponsor it. They know what to do without being told. So make sure that you are part of the people that, you know, partner with God. You can't partner with God and, and regret it. It shall be well between the name of Jesus. Shall we rise up on our feet with your offering, with your mantle, with your prayer request, with your anointing oil. I pray as the prophet of God, everyone giving to support, everyone giving their offering and their tithe, let God, the giver of life, give you a unique glory. Amen. Give you a new glory. Amen. Give your children a unique glory. Amen. Take you to the environment where you will shine. Amen. Separate you and from people that can kill you and your glory. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. The Lord accepts your offering. Amen. I pray for people that have sent in their prayer requests all over the world. Let the Lord answer them. Amen. Give them testimony. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. That your prayer request will turn to praise request. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Before the first 10 days in this meeting. Receive your testimony. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I separate all this water from ordinary water and turn it to the blood of Jesus. Amen. Let the blood of enter into that water. Amen. I turn that oil, a symbol of the Holy Spirit. Let the power of God possess that oil. Amen. Possess your mantle. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So shall it be. Amen. I pray before this time tomorrow, everyone say three powerful amen. Receive your testimony. Amen. 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 In Jesus' name. Set and may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The love of God. Amen. Sweet for the Holy Spirit. Amen. Rest and abide with us. Amen. Now and forevermore. Amen. 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 In Jesus' name. Set to three powerful. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. amen.